in your heart you can't get up you can't stay down you think this must be the end of the line but i'm here by your side holding on holding tight come on friend let's move on to a higher place jello omaki sojo chibolu bori ni wa how bori don don all about transparency accountability consensus responsiveness and inclusiveness the leader not just talking is listening meet your governor you're right you know Hello, thanks a lot for joining us on another edition of Meet Your Governor. And if you're watching the program for the first time, it's a platform where you have the opportunity to interact with the Governor of Ikita State, Dr. John Kaudi Fayemi. It's all about governance, it's all about accountability, and it's all about stewardship and sincerity in governance. Thanks a lot for joining us, and thanks a lot for listening, if you're listening on radio. My name is Kola Jimobi, I'm the anchor of the program, and I'm being joined by two of my colleagues. I have uh, Jide Ogunlui, he's from Adaba FM. Thanks a lot for joining us, Jide from Akure. Thank you very much, and I want to welcome His Excellency on the hot seat, so to speak. <laughs> and, then we and then we have Femi Makinde, he's the state correspondent of Punch Newspapers here in Likita State. Femi, thanks mm -hmm. a lot for joining us. Thank you, too. Welcome, Mr. Governor. And on behalf of all the participating stations, that's talking about the BSCS, EKTV, Ekitinaida 1.5 FM, 100.5, uh, that's the Federal Radio Corporation, Progress 100.5 in Ado, and the Nigerian Television Authority here in Ado. We say thanks a lot, Mr. Governor, for making time out of your busy, busy schedule uh, to fulfill your promise. Thanks a lot for coming on the program, sir. Thank you for having me, Kola, GD, and Femi. And um, thank you, viewers at home and listeners on the radio. It's wonderful to be back here. All right, Mr. Governor, let's move on straight to uh, business. And I'd like to start from the angle of death. Uh, you have lost three people very close to you in quick succession. First, it was your father. Secondly, it was your mother. And then uh, a few weeks ago, you lost your deputy whom you have fondly described as a co-pilot. Uh, what, what does the death of the deputy say to you about life and um, uh, the ephemeral state of human being and, of course, uh, the lessons that you can draw uh, from all these incidents? You must be a strong man to be able to cope with these tra uh, uh, tragedies in quick succession. <laughs> Carla, thank you for, for that question. You know, it was John Donne, the... British um, novelist that once said that every death diminishes us, whether it's the death of people who are close to you or people who are distant, because it's about humanity. It's, it's a loss to humanity generally. Yes, um, in the course of struggling to come to this office. I lost my dad in 2009, and he was 87 when I lost him. So you couldn't really say that um, he died um, untimely. Uh, untimely or in an unprepared manner. Well, we, we still did not want him to die even then, but at least he lived to a ripe old age, and we thank God for his life. And my mom passed on last year um, at 83. She too was not exactly uh, a spring chicken. Uh, she was quite uh, fulfilled in her life. And in her own case, she actually witnessed my being governor in the state. So um, we were sorry to see her go, but um, she also lived a to ripe old age. Uh, and then this unfortunate and uh, very, very sad loss that um, we have just encountered. 
Yeah, I, I think it stresses the, as you've rightly described, the transience of life and why uh, we must do what we can within the period that we are in this earthly realm to, to be good um, and to have a legacy worth talking about when we're no longer here. Uh, that's the lesson that I've always drawn from deaths around me, uh, uh, be it death of distant people or the death of um, people who have closer home. And my deputy lived a very, very worthy life, an eventful and an impactful life, uh, as I've had cause to describe it. Uh, she left a rich legacy uh, of not just dedication and loyalty, and, and I'm not talking about loyalty to me. It's, it's easy for people to always talk about loyalty to governor as a principal quality of those who are deputies. It's loyalty to a cause. It's loyalty to a mission. The mission is about transforming equity. It's about making poverty history here. And all our life, even when she was experiencing excruciating pain, she remained very dedicated and committed to making a fundamental difference in the lives of our people. Uh, for, for that, it's a legacy that um, we felt and we continue to feel has been worth celebrating. That's why we uh, felt we owed our duty to give her a befitting uh, funeral uh, that others can also look up to in future and say, it's good to be good. It's good to choose public service as the highest form of honor and duty to our society. That's what um, I've learned from it. And uh, we shall continue to celebrate her in very many ways. Um, we've just announced a series of things today uh, uh, in, in honor of our memory and um, the, the, the ailment that also uh, uh, killed her. And we believe that there would be further opportunities for us as a people and a state to acknowledge the uh, excellence and passion of this iconic figure uh, in our state. Right. Femi. Okay, Jide. Right. Sorry. Uh, okay, uh, at death uh, heralded the construction of uh, a Hellos Park opposite the civic center. That's in our doing it here. And uh, there are three issues connected with this. One is that what will be the criteria for selection of future occupants of that Eros Park? And uh, who and who will actually be qualified to be buried there? That's number one. Then, uh, could you please recap government's plan to immortalize the lead deputy governor? You've announced a series of uh, uh, immortalization process, but we want to know how, when it will come into effect. And then finally, on the connected to this same question, is that when will a successor be announced, <coughs> considering the busy nature of governance? Maybe thank thank you, Jide. No, no, no. I, I, I'd like to think I, I would be able to remember all the questions you've asked. <laughs> um, but let me start from the easiest. Okay. When will a successor emerge? A successor will come when it will come. How soon? I don't know. As uh, soon as we're able to find one, we would announce a successor. Okay, uh, the question uh, so on the Euros that's, Park. That's on that, on the Euros Park. The Euros Park, uh, the, 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 the death of our deputy just gave us an opportunity to do something that we've always uh, wanted to do uh, because we feel that. Um, Ekiti really must remain a land of history. One of the things that I've tried to do since I came into office was to reconnect us to our past and our past heroes. So if you're doing the Fabumi Memorial uh, Museum in Okemesi, or we're talking about Fajuyi, who uh, was a hero of our people and, and exemplified the courage that we've always been associated with. It's also important for us to have a place, a memorial that people can always uh, revisit. 
as part of the historical momentum and development of our state. If you, let, let me start, cite an example that is outside of here, but which is pretty relevant to us. If you are a president in the United States of America, for example, and you die either in office or out of office, you would always be brought back to Washington, D.C. and be buried at the Lincoln Memorial. Uh, so you know that that place is a place for those who have been, because you asked about criteria. Yeah. Uh, that criteria should not just be left to the whims and caprices of those who are in office alone. It should be something written into law, and we're going to be sending a bill to the House of Assembly that actually encapsulates our vision for the Eurospark. There are those who have asked me, well, so what if you also die, Mr. Governor, and Asian people insist that you must come back home and be buried, given our own traditional approach to these things? Uh, it may well end up being a hero's pack for Ado indigenous alone and not uh, uh, all of us from Ekiti. I think we can make it what we want it to be. My own vision for it is that we would have a set of criteria that defines who has been an Ekiti hero. And it should not just be political figures. There are those who have served Ekiti in various walks of life and who have excelled and who should qualify if the family allows them to be interred in, in the place. Uh, once the nuclear family of Mrs. Olainka agreed with us that having served as the deputy governor and having served the kitty with distinction that we could bury her here, we didn't just want to go and put her in some vault and gardens-like place where you have 200 other people. Uh, we wanted a place that could become uh, a place to visit by those who do not even know her 20, 30 years down the line that a woman came, served her people, gave everything, and uh, she was honored and recognized for that purpose. And it's interesting that it's a woman that we've done this to in a society that is extremely patriarchal. We are also making a statement that um, leadership and heroism is not unique to men. After all, Morimi Ajashoro, uh, whose uh, name she's been fondly referred to, died uh, for her people uh, and was courageous in the defense of the Ife, uh, our, our people, uh, in, in the course of our time. So this is also uh, another dimension to that. But this will be fully worked out and shared with the people. Mm. All right, then, Femi, let's uh, sound you out before we take the first break on the program. Thank you, sir. While still mourning the death of your deputy, another tragedy occurred in the state. The flood swept away one child. One child. And so many houses were sacked by flood. Mm -hmm. I want to ask, what is your government you know, doing to ensure that such is you know, prevented from occurring again? Well, you know, flood is a natural disaster. It's not limited to even... Uh, our environment. In fact, I, I think we've been lucky so far. Before the flood came, we had anticipated this and we had embarked on the dredging and channelization of very many places that had been uh, susceptible to flood in the past, particularly the road down to you here at BSES around um, uh, IME Garage uh, we had done some dredging, MFM, if you go around mountain, uh, 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 fire uh, place, you would see what government is doing in those areas. But that's one aspect of it. The people also owe a duty to themselves, our people, to protect their own lives and property. And that's why government has continuously insisted that you cannot build without development control, without approval. It's one thing to have a CFO. It's another thing to just build without the approval of your plans for the area in which you've obtained the CFO for. And that's why I've given two weeks that 
any property, particularly in the areas that uh, we've had this uh, major problems. If you, if you go down um, Nova area, uh, peace, uh, peace estate, some parts of Okela, uh, Afal Road, you know that people are building without proper approval from government. And I've said that all these places will be demolished because we must save lives. We must protect lives. The irony of the situation where the child died actually was that it was one of the roads that we have just done. It's the drainage that had overflown and the kid who went with her sister because I went to, the, to, to, to see the family to commiserate with them uh, could not distinguish between the level of water and the ground. And that was what resulted in that tragedy. Uh, but the challenge is we have to make sure that we have wider channels, wider drains. We must desilt the drains, which we're doing, and also ensure that where we have people blocking waterways, that those buildings are removed in order to avoid this sort of tragedy in the state. And you would have seen the Commissioner for Fiscal Planning and, and, and Urban Development going around with his team to mark a number of properties in the state just to avoid this kind of tragedy in the future. All right, Mr. Governor, we still have a whole lot more questions on uh, physical and urban planning, security concerns in Ikita State, particularly uh, the Aramoko and Igidi incidences, and of course, uh, free health mission just concluded, and lots more. After the break, if you had an opportunity to interact with the governor, what would you ask him? Take a look. Transformational agenda represents our vision for a greater Ikiti where the business of governance is not only transparent but accountable and responsive. Where we create optimum opportunities that will improve citizens' lives and attract investments. Where quality education is a right, not a privilege. Where good and cheap health care is not a luxury. Where our land is evergreen and no single child goes to bed unfed. that is crucial I will tell him is to just be focused. Continue what is doing, but to extend this beautification project to other places like my own local government now, I call it local government. Not listening to the opposition, he must just be focused and continue with what he's doing. Because looking at Adekiti now, we know that Ado is wearing a, good, a better look now. Uh, we, I appreciate it, Mr. Governor. Especially on road, in road infrastructure, they have come to, they have come to, to be lively for you to offer motorable. But the area that I will, I will try to to talk to Mr. Governor is that all this uh, job creation, you need, you need to extend it. You should try as much as possible. The next program, you should let them to uh, let people know that maybe they will obtain the form, maybe they will, maybe, maybe they will buy the form, maybe the form they will give them to free. In it because so some people will benefit on this uh, program. Actually, I really appreciate what the governor has done in it, and I pray the Lord will help him to do more and more again. The man is working, and I pray that God will make the equity to forward forever. We appreciate Mr. Governor for his role, his contribution, for being the first governor that came to. A state special school, any of the special schools to come in person and even celebrated his birthday with us. That shows love, care, kind, and even uh, acceptability. 
but we want him to do one more thing for us. That is, it is not good for us to be educated without employment. We want him to grant us employment. We want him to beat the record. Because there's a governor has employed over 150 persons with disability in this state. We want him to have a good record. We are starting a list of employment, not yet out. So we are appeal to Mr. Governor to please employ those qualified persons with disabilities. That's okay, Mary. The governor, oh, she that oh, oh, she won't I want me. I want on a city. I say, I say, city. Oh, me, ni bika go me ni so again a city. Yeah, side ibitia. Oh, me ni na la re be 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 ke kato bogbe saka ibitia. Yeah, but I try again. So, so be just le ma se to. So be be na aku di di ka to. I'm coming back when you come job. I'm with you. I was here for my down loan last week. Actually, I want to hear what I'm okay. Get to know what you want. Nisha, I'm about to wash it. I'm about to share one now. One day, show me a name, but look at the other day. But men better get committed. I want to do new new side. No, say someone here. So, remember, you mean that when you're back, I'm about to make about I want to share one. I want to share one. I'm about to be good with the other day. I think what I like. I'm about to be to yale yi kon jo awon na ti ri gbugbu e kon ba mojuto is all about transparency accountability consensus responsiveness and inclusiveness the leader not just talking is listening meet your governor you're right you know thanks a lot for staying with us and before we had that break we were talking about uh, environmental issues but as it's customary with us we'd like to take uh, the governor's response to the issues raised by the uh, Vox Populi that you just watched and um, thereafter we'll come back to questions uh, in-house and if you want to participate in the course of the program before we draw the curtains you can send your text messages only to this number 0816728 I repeat 0816728 that's for text messages only and if you want to call when it's time we will take callers from members of the public the number to do that is 0844655608 id please scroll uh, these numbers on the screen but i'm announcing it for the benefit of those listening on radio if you want to call once again is 0844655608 mr governor sir let's uh, have your reactions to the issues raised well Being uh, focused. I, I, I think they were objective um commendation and constructive criticisms um about jobs, uh, about three of the callers of the, the interviewees talked about the place of providing jobs for those who are jobless or reviewing our youth volunteer scheme to take on board additional people who are desperately looking for something to do. And, and I've always said that I'll, I see a link between poverty and insecurity. And once we're able to meet people uh, halfway, then we also have an obligation to raise our concerns about uh, uh, their obligations to society themselves. We are never going to have an opportunity to provide jobs for everybody. Even where we do, there are people that we have encouraged to take on jobs from local contractors, for example as part of our local content policy in the contracts of most of the road construction workers, the building project workers, and so on and so forth. And sadly, when I go to talk to these contractors, they tell me that a number of our people who come to take the jobs would work till 12 noon and disappear, or work for two days out of the, a week, and they don't come back once they've collected the money. So there is also, a question of reorientation of values that we must all address in a kitty society. A kitty 
used to be a byword for dignity of labor, for integrity, for honor. Where has that gone with our younger generation? Maybe we need to really sit down with them. And I've decided that I'm going to be having regular sessions with our young people so that I get a sense of their own reason and what they consider to be priorities uh, in, 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 in this environment so, so that we can meet them at that point of, of, of need. It, there's, there's just no point putting people on a volunteer scheme. Some of the people we've put on volunteer scheme, we're reviewing the entire volunteer scheme now because people are just collecting 10,000 Naira every month and they don't show up in the places of work where we expect them to, to work. Some have since moved on to better things. They are in traffic management, they are in paramedics, they are in fire, they are in teaching. But you also have others who just want to collect money. And since we pay to the banks, it's easier for them to just collect their money in the bank and not uh, show up at where they expect them to contribute volunteer uh, uh, service. So we would review all these and ensure that we take on board many more people, including people with disabilities that the gentleman mentioned. He has a point. If they're qualified, there's no reason why we should not give people with disabilities jobs. And we do give them jobs. I know since I came into office, we must have recruited no fewer than 25, 30 people uh, with disabilities as teachers, as civil servants, as uh, uh, in all uh, uh, areas of work. All right, Jide, okay. yes, I know you're about to ask uh, the, the question on attitudinal change vis-a-vis -vis the environment, but I just want uh, Mr. Governor to react to this one quickly because he talked about um, a correlation between job creation and security, yeah. and that takes us to uh, the, 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 the security concerns that we raised in the last episode of this program, particularly on the exit roads, which mm -hmm. you probably addressed. But I'd like to have your reaction to the scaling up of violence in two parts of Ikita State in the last four weeks. Mm -hmm. One the Aramoko incident, a, a life was lost. Mm -hmm. And then the Gidi uh, incidents too, which involved a member of the House of Representatives. What is your reaction to the scale up of violence, political violence, and uh, in Likita State in these two areas? Well, first and foremost, anyone who knows me knows that I have never had any uh, association with political violence. Uh, I have struggled to get to this point in Ekiti uh, using purely non-violent means. Uh, even when I had been attacked, I've always restrained our people. I've always argued that I don't want to be governor over dead people. And I still maintain that stance, even in government. I, I'm sure most Ekiti people can attest to the civility of this administration. But we also know that when people are ambitious for one reason or the other, they would also add desperation to that ambition. And it is quite possible that what we have seen in the two cases you, you referred to uh, uh, is not unconnected with that. I don't want to prejudice investigations that may be going on uh, on the part of the security agencies as far as the two uh, issues that you raised uh, uh, is concerned. All that I would just like to do is an appeal, an appeal to all sides that politics without bitterness sh should be what we focus on here. Ekiti has had an unfortunate history with violent politics, particularly in the recent past. But since I came into office, I have tried as much as possible to reduce the tension that is often associated with politics. And I want to give my word. I hope other politicians will come to the table and also give similar words that they will not be associated with violence in their politics. I think it's time once again for the renewal of the Edo Declaration that came after the Omoborio war incidents, violence in Ekiti. We've had several levels of violence. Many would recall what happened in Ifaki, what happened uh, to Dr. Ayodamola, and uh, subsequent violent activities in politics. I think politicians have to come together. And as the governor, who is 
in the driver's seat right now in Ikiti. I'm quite prepared to welcome all of us. Let's have a conversation about this and play politics in a civil manner, not resorting to violence because there is nothing to fight for. I may be governor today, I won't be governor forever. Another person would come to this seat and it is what we do now that would help us establish a culture of non-violence. And the reason why someone like me does not indulge in violence is maybe because I know too much about violence. I'm a scholar of violence and war. And that precisely is one of the reasons why I know that it does not bear good fruit at the end of the day. So nobody should indulge in violence. And anyone caught involved in violence should face the maximum wrath of the law. I appeal to politicians, to their supporters particularly, because it may not even be these politicians themselves who indulge in the, in, 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 in the violence, but they have supporters who either naively or deliberately resort to violence in the various engagements they uh, undertake uh, amongst the, uh, one another. And I think we, we really need to caution people who follow politicians, including politicians in the ruling party. So I think that's important. All right, sir. Uh, maybe, uh, a follow up to that, sir. Mm. The chairman of the PDP just mm. yesterday threatened a fire for fire. Fire for fire. Well, I think it's unfortunate to talk about fire for fire. Fire for fire where? Who has resorted to fire in the first instance that he is responding fire to fire to? PDP has a culture of violence. I think that is indubitable in the politics of Ekiti State and even in the politics of our country. I will sit down with Mark Onjola if I have the opportunity to. I would invite him to my office. And if he has legitimate, independently verifiable evidence of any ACN member or politician who has been involved in violence against him or against members of his party, then let him bring it forward. Rather than talk about fire for fire, he's just looking for an opportunity. And if he wants to engage in fire, he will face the maximum wrath of the law. I will let him know that. All right, uh, back uh, to Your you. Excellency, uh, I think we should drop the issue of fire for fire for now and talk about uh, ethics and values. Uh, Absolutely. Yes. When it rains in Adwikiti, you see people rushing out to dump their refuse in uh, drainages constructed by government. And uh, some of these drainages are very, very close to garbage collection points which the Minister of Environment or the relevant ministry placed for them to dump the refuse. And I begin to look at the ethics and values, the beautification work the government is embarking upon in Adwikiti metropolis and other parts of the state. Will your beautification exercise not be truncated by this attitude? It's, it's a legitimate concern, GD. It's a concern that we have as well. In fact, um, we are starting an Operation Clean Kitty initiative, which would be uh, launched with an advocacy meeting that I'm going to chair on Friday. I think that's the 3rd of, uh, uh, of May. Uh, which the Ministry of Environment is driving. And it is to respond to the kind of issue you've raised. When you have people who throw garbage in the drains, obviously they know that they're going to block those drains. But we've taken additional step. If you look at the main drains inside Adwekiti, especially on the new roads, you will see that we do not only construct drains, we also cover them with slabs so as to avoid this kind of uh, irresponsible behavior. But we would also, in addition to conscientizing our people and improving knowledge about this, we would also ensure that there is enforcement of law because there is definitely regulation against indiscriminate throwing of garbage on the streets. That's number one. The second issue that government has a responsibility for is also to provide uh, regular collection of uh, garbage. And you would know that we started a public-private initiative in this regard. 
where people are meant to pay a certain sum of money, I think ranging from 500 naira to 1,000 naira, depending on the on the area. But our people are still not fully used to this. Uh, some do pay it, and they've had some challenges with the garbage collectors uh, in certain parts. So we're reviewing the entire thing now and bringing in new compactor trucks to uh, engage in that more because we cannot just leave these roads that we've constructed and the drains to the whims and caprices of those who don't care about whether the environment is clean or not. We would insist on the proper thing being done by our people, but we would also provide them with uh, uh, collection points and garbage collection for the waste uh, that has been generated. Because I do is a is growing, mm -hmm. and we have to live with the implications of that growth. Yeah, as a writer to that, you're not talking about punishment for offenders if you're caught. Well, I've just said that. Okay. I, I said that. I said there is law against this, and enforcement has been the issue. We would also enforce the law to ensure that those who do this indiscriminately are going to be taken up by the law. All right, Mr. Governor, the people would also like to know when government will begin to wield the big stick on those who break the development control uh, policy laws and build on spots designated as roads and waterways, even in places uh, called GREs in Adwekiti. Uh, th th that's one. And then some people have alleged that some government workers have compromised in the area of development control. That's why you see some buildings on the waterways, on the roads, they are marked, and then the owners go wipe it up and they continue with the construction, and nothing happens. Well, you know, you've raised a very, very pertinent point. Uh, it, it, it's not uncommon to have certain officials of government who sometimes compromise. But that would not vitiate the offense that has been committed. There was a certain gentleman known as engineer success in the federal capital territory when malam nasir al Rufai was minister. the minister and this man was able to get fake copies of cfo development control plans and all sorts for so many people including ministers or ex-ministers but when nasir al Rufai came he still insisted on demolishing those houses because they were improperly built okay. They violated the law. So you're on your own. That's all I will say. If you say somebody in the Ministry of Fiscal Planning has given you a fake development control approval and mm -hmm. you have built on the road or on the waterway, you are on your own. I'm going to demolish your house. If you like, you say you will not vote for fire me if I come to ask you for vote. But what is right must be done by all of us. We cannot just live in a society that is lawless. It's, it's important that we begin to change. People commend us when they come to our door now. And we must build on that. We must not reverse uh, in, in the direction. Okay. Uh, uh, added to uh, that, we, we've seen streetlights in Adwekiti, particularly at the city center. And uh, we've also seen a gradual but very slow expansion, extension to other areas like Ikere and the interior parts of the state. When will these communities begin to enjoy these uh, streetlights? Thank you. That's a question that I actually didn't respond to. One of the callers, one of the people interviewed, raised the issue of uh, concentration of development in Adwekiti. Uh, I, I would no, no, because he mentioned he said no. he, he would like it to come to his own local government. That was that was the point he made. I want to say that one, there is no over concentration of modernization in Adwekiti. Adwekiti is the capital of Ekiti State. Almost everybody who wants to come to Ekiti wants to come to Adwekiti. And when somebody comes to your house. They do not necessarily enter your bedroom, but they definitely get to your parlor. And they take away the impression they get from your sitting room uh, to paint what is happening in your bedrooms. And our bedrooms meaning Ishan, Ayede, and all the, the suburbs. But let me also add, all the new roads that we're building, that we're constructing in Ikiti now, they're mostly in the rural areas because there's no part of a kitty that is not con connected by roads over the last 
16 odd years. The problem is that those roads were badly constructed and they've all gone bad. And what we've been doing is reconstructing many of the roads, which is the evidence you see around the kitty now. In addition to that, every year we're constructing about 80 kilometers of new road. No government in this state has constructed 50 kilometers of new road in a year. No government before we came in. We construct 80 kilometers of brand new road, roads in bushes, and connecting one community to another. It may be one kilometer in Ikogosi, or two kilometers in Ilawe, or one in Isho in Kitibo. Every community is benefiting from our road construction. That's in terms of roads. The hospitals that we're fixing this year covers every community because it's every general hospital, every primary health care centers that we're, that, that we're reconstructing and refurbishing. All the schools, the 183 schools that we have rebuilt in the last one year, there is no community in the kitty that did not benefit from that. Not to mention the social security. Every community in this state benefits from one thing or the other. Currently, I just finished a meeting with community leaders, towns unions this morning about security and about projects that they requested when they met me in December. We have since sent people back to those communities to discuss the costings of those projects with them. And we've finalized that. We're going back there now to hand over the checks to each and every community for projects that they have requested. These are projects they asked for, not projects that we have given them. In addition to all the things we've done there, some want palaces rebuilt or built from scratch. Some want schools, some want health centers, some want uh, marketplaces. They just suggest these projects. And as part of our participatory budget making process, we have taken on board their own initiatives. And the Ministry of Rural Development and Community Empowerment is now going back to those communities to hand over checks to them. And I will personally hand over those checks in the next one or two months in many of the community affairs. So no one can say that development is concentrated in Ado, but Ado needs to look like a proper capital city, not a village shed that used to be the case before. Right. Fermi, no, no, uh, Ajili, let's go to text messages from members of the public. Um, the first one here says, Your Excellency, my condolences over the death of your deputy. Sir, heavy flooding that always occur along Olat Hotel is due to a building illegally erected to block the waterway by a chief in the area. The building had been marked for demolition on a number of occasions, uh, but we hear that the chief always settles. Please, sir, try to pay a visit there yourself. The town planning people won't tell you the truth. That's from Shola Adu. The next one, Your Excellency, I accept my condolences on the death of your deputy. Please, sir, are you aware that electricity situation in Adoikiti has become so bad now? Please, what is happening to the 332 KV station at Omission Jano? That's from Kayo Deoju. And the third one also expresses his condolences and his request is that please, the Ureje Emiri River along Poli Road is gradually becoming a nightmare. Save our soul. Olushe Olale. Maybe you take the okay. first three. Well, very quickly, you've touched on this issue and I'm repeating myself on it. I'm sure the officials of the Ministry of Fiscal Planning and Urban Development are listening very carefully. I've given them a matching order. Okay. Any property erected illegally in Adwekiti, I've given two weeks, seven days had already passed. They should have finished their enumeration now. That particular property, I'm going to follow it up with the commissioner and then see who the chief who yes. has been allegedly settling exactly. because it may not be the case, but that is a citizen who is complaining. He has a right, right. to have a response to what uh, he has raised. On uh, the electricity situation, the electricity situation in the country has degenerated. I mean, we've gone down to about 1,700 uh, megawatts from about 4,000. And I'm a member of the uh, Integrated Power Project uh, Board representing the Southwest. And I know the challenges that we're facing with this. I've still been on the phone to uh, Professor Nebo, who used to be an So he's familiar So when I raise these issues with him. And we're trying what we can to do that. But we are also 
embarking on an independent power project mm -hmm. initiative in Ekiti so that we can add to whatever we get from the national grid. Okay, then they save us all from the gentleman who lives along Polytechnic Road. The oh, road that's now. the gentleman talking about roads that is damaged. Uh, yes, I think it's uh, Ureje Emiri River along Poly Road. It's becoming a nightmare. Save us all. Well, I guess it's, it's also related to flood. Okay, yes, it uh, is. And, and that would require channelization. We've identified all the flood prone areas in the last one week, and government will be moving in there to dredge channels and expand those drains. Please, we'd like to announce once again that if you want to call, you have the time now to place a call. The number to do that is 081 four four six five five six zero eight zero eight one four four six five five six zero eight it's your time to call and ask any any question under the sun as by kitty from mr governor femi mr Gordo, sir, your free admission is a laudable project and they recently concluded one about 51,000 uh, residents were said to have no benefit from it. 65,000. 65. 65. Uh, there was this uh, rumor that substandard uh, drugs were distributed to people that came. How do you react to this? Uh? <laughs> Femi, I'm sure you know that we are, we are fast moving into the political season. The free health mission that we just concluded was the seventh mission since I became governor. We started January 2011 and we've had seven across the length and breadth of the state. Collectively, over 500,000 people have benefited. There's been no single incident of anybody experiencing drug poisoning in that free health mission. And you know why? The bulk of the drug either comes from our own central medical, medical stores here or directly from drug manufacturers. We would not compromise on such a thing. And that is why people are so much enamored of the free health mission. And when you see them interview people, you even see some people say, I am PDP. I, I, I watched the last one. And when they got to IA, of course you know that IA, uh, Ifishi, Iboli, the representative, the honorable there, is PDP. And she came and spoke about the mission that, look, this is not a party thing. Mr. Governor is asking everybody who has one form of ailment or another. And the people trooped out, including those who may have voted for her or been a supporter or the supporter of uh, the party in the place. We do not play politics with the lives of our people. Whether it is education or health care or social security or any benefit that we have rendered to Ekiti people, I do not subscribe to politics of opportunism. Right. So Hello. that's that that okay. allegation has no basis or foundation. All right. Uh, all right, all right, then, Mr. Governor, we have the very first caller on the line uh, in this edition. Hello, thanks a lot for joining us, Kenny. Hello, good evening. Excellency. Good evening, sir. Good evening, our Excellency. How are you, sir? Thank you so much. And uh, we are talking about the loss of data, our beautiful lady, in the situation. So, secondly, sir, the issue of this uh, divider, this beautiful divider, what, what is our Excellency doing about those that will decide by either carelessly, by accident, or any other means? And that this is our people, half money. Well, thank you. What you are doing is actually uh, very commendable. You are acting as a citizen uh, who knows the right from wrong. The law enforcement agents are the ones empowered to do this. But we also have the Ekiti State Traffic Management Agency, EXMA. In fact, on my way here, I just instructed EXMA to arrest a vehicle that had just damaged one of the uh, uh, medians. Because they have had course in the past to ask them to arrest one that damaged one of the beautiful street light poles. And anyone who does it, let me just make it clear to Ekiti people. These things have cost a lot of money. And it is your money. It is not Fireme's money. I'm not doing anybody a favor. It is the state resources. 
anybody who does that would have not just their vehicle impounded, they will be arrested until they provide the money to fix what has been damaged. If people are not clear in their mind, I am repeating it now. If you damage, whether accidentally or deliberately, government property, you will pay. And if you don't pay, I will make sure that you are kept in detention and charged to court for willful damage of public property. Because we cannot allow this to happen. Okay, we have another caller, Mrs. Olua Sami from Adeum. Good I'm evening. From Adeum. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, sir. Hey, don't uh find out the company, sir. Okay, ma'am. Hey, I'm sure you you just have to go man on you know what? I mean ma'am. Hey, don't I'm gonna find out if we say you can come on the man for salary to go out or work out the state. Okay, I should. Eh, for one funny, be ni a dear binny be my watch on so limbo. To bad oh, she shared your banny state in me. I back on all the echo you didn't to real water and son see. Eh, a man son electronically, a man son for eh uh, royal abi asha ni igba kan na ti account and general abade ti click pe buy ni jo ti owo ma dinu account yin ni jo te ba gba ti yin ni governor na ngba wo osu ti e amo awon osise to wa ni joba ibile owo ti won le ma jade ni gba ti owo ti yin ba ma jade ba pa julo mo pe losu yi nitori awon iwadi kan ton se nbe mo pe owo ti won sese ma ma dinu I live for Opa Momo, lower lower ni. Yato sit down, oh, she shared tea, if we let on tea bow, oh, she won. More pay at two and Benny, a more uncotaman, so you pay, keep the bounce, or I call some work on Tiraka, Latis on woe shoe, key auto D, or jaw, can the logo, ah, can the logo, ah, oh, shoe. Shall I be okay? Yes, there's another call on the line. It's like Benga from Adwekiti. Hello. Hello, good evening, sir. We are doing Benga from Bangalore. Hello, sir. Yes, sir. Please, sir, your internet is. I come and read them with you on your demise of your deputy. Thank you, sir. All right, sir. Please, we want you to come to our aid at uh, Adawa Market. Let me bridge for the first day. They have been given a lot of problems and they have destroyed so many properties at that area. We come to your office with something severally and we believe that it is only you that can use your good office to have this up. Okay. So we did look for them several days and we said that they cannot fund it. That this state, it is only the state that will assist us on it. Thank you, okay. okay, I will I will find out more about the bridge that is being constructed around the Joa Market. Thank you very much. Uh, we have just about five minutes to wind down on the program, and we'll take uh, one more question from Femi and Jide. So, Femi, your government recently announced variation of a contract song for Ado Ifakirosa. We want to know why this was done and. How soon will the road be ready? Good question. Uh, we were the ones who actually volunteered this information in the spirit of transparency and accountability of this government. The Honorable Commissioner for Information came out after the last Executive Council meeting to give information about the upward review of that contract based on the request of the contractor. This contract, you remember, I didn't award this contract. The previous government awarded this contract in 2007. And the first contract sum was 6.8, I'm not sure, 6.3 or so, 6.3 billion. Uh, the same government reviewed this contract upward to 7.4 billion. When we came 
to office. That road was not even 20% done. And they had paid out 5.4 billion naira as at October 2010 that I became governor in this state. Meaning that what was left was 2 billion to complete the 80% work that was left in the contract. But we made a wise judgment of not revoking the contract because it would have been too much for us. And it's tied to federal government. It's not our road. It would have been easier for us to do that if it was our road. It's a, it's a federal government road. And the federal government has agreed to, of course, refund whatever we've spent on it. Right now, I don't know when last you really went on the road. I went on inspection on that road today. I was there this morning. And if you went to the Ifaki Worokoen, you would have seen that one section of the road has been connected between Ifaki to Iworoko now. The second section, I gave instructions today that I want that connected within the next two weeks by the contractor so that they can concentrate the rest of their work inside Ado Ekiti. Now, talking about the rationale for uh, for the, the re, for the yeah. review, the variation. What the contractor even asked for was 14 billion. So the contractor wanted double what it was originally awarded for. That 7.4 billion that I talked about. But we looked at it, and and they provided justification. Uh, a similar road that was awarded the same year by the federal government between Lokoja, Abaji, and Abuja had been reawarded to the same contractor, variation, four times over. But we said, yes, we know that stone base has gone up, bitumen price has gone up, asphalt has gone up, the wage bill has increased from 2008 to now. I mean, minimum wage is no longer 7,000 that we used to pay when we came to office is now 18,000. So we can see where they're coming from. But I've refused. I've said, look, in principle, yes, we would review this, but we will still not pay the upward review until we've seen appreciable improvement on what has been done. And, and that's, that's what they're working on now. We still haven't paid more than what we're what was originally uh, awarded uh, 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 in 7.4 billion. But we know that we would have to meet this obligation that we've committed ourselves to. And the federal government cannot uh, but refund us because they know that it's realistic. It's even, uh, there are those who would argue that it's under, uh, 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 under, uh, under budgeted in terms of the upward review that has been done. Well, sorry, today we will not be able to take your question anymore. Like we say, we save the rest for another day. It's time for the news now, and we must bring the program to a close. And I uh, would like to thank Mr. Governor very much uh, for finding time to uh, be on the hot seat, like Jide said. And I believe that you've been up to the task to answer various questions uh, f uh, you've been fielding, both within and from outside. Thanks a lot for joining us, Mr. Governor. Well, thank you, Kuala. Thank you, Jide and Femi. It's uh, wonderful to be back here. It's, it's been a difficult month for us in Ikiti. I pray that we would not have to encounter the sort of tragedy that um, had befallen us. Uh, and for those of us left here, I believe the greatest tribute we can pay to uh, the dear departed deputy governor is to continue on the path, just as one of the callers said, uh, without minding what anybody says, put our, our eyes on the ball, be focused on making improvement in the lives of our people and making poverty history in the state. Thank right. you very much. All right, if you've been watching the program, it's four gentlemen on the screen, but we have a whole team behind doing the, uh, the, uh, the lot of work. And uh, we have the Honorable Commissioner for Information and Civic Orientation, Mr. Tayo Kendayo. He's on the entourage of Mr. Governor. Thanks a lot for coming, sir. We have his colleague in the Housing, Physical Planning and Urban Development Ministry, Elder Remy Olorun Lake. Thanks a lot for coming. Chief Press Secretary to the Governor, Mr. Yinkao Yibodi, is also on the team. Thanks a lot. Director General BSES, Mr. Shino Awelewa. Elder Wali Ayaga, Mr. Iduwadebi, and members of the board. Mr. Martin Zayola is General Manager at FM in Akure. Mrs. Gloria Toba, 
She's general manager NT Adwikiti, Mr. Dari Olongfem is GM Progress FM, and uh, Mr. Wale Uju is GM EKTV, and Mr. Iduwo Gutwashi is GM Ekiti FM. Odwan Yogumola is SA Media, Babs Dramola is also SA Media. This is Destination Point. Thanks a lot for watching. Let's do it together by the grace of God next month. India represents our vision for a greater Ekiti where the business of governance is not only transparent but accountable and responsive where we create optimum opportunities that will improve citizens lives and attract investments where quality education is a right not a privilege where good and cheap health care is not a luxury where our land is ever green and no single child goes to bed unfed about transparency accountability consensus responsiveness and inclusiveness.